I want to do a quick video on this one. I went ahead and finished up the fuel system on this one. This, this is a two and a half gallon fuel cell. And if you open this up, you'll see I got the I got two layers of four inch thick by eight inch by eight inch foam pieces in there. And there is a fuel sending unit. And I just got my hand in there and I pushed it up against that back wall because I really, really don't need it. Um, this one's not, not that fancy. So, ah, uh, these are pain in my butt. Come on, get back in there. Anyhow, forget that. Uh, I got a &N fit fittings. These are caps. You use no thread sealant on these. On these, they have a 45 in there um, angle piece that mates from there to there. This is a cap with a half inch um, tube going out. And what this is for, this is a silicon tube, and it's going up here and it's coming down to an air filter. That is my breather that keeps this from locking up. Um, this cap is not used. This is a dash 10 AN, a dash 10 AN cap. And this is uh, tapped for a 3 8 um, 3 8 port. It's used for uh, putting fuel gauges and stuff like that, or a pressure gauge right there. And I put a nipple. Um, what size is it? It's not 1 8 Ah, crap. I can't remember. It's the one below that. And I, I put a little bit. Got a fuel filter. I held that down and I and I routed it to where I'm away from the exhaust and I went almost the same route to the carburetor and in here it goes through there's a little round thing that holds the fuel line the stock fuel line and it comes down and it goes right onto that nipple so I could still use my original on and off um, thing for the original um, original carburetor um, this bracket you could see how I have a diagonal right here across the bottom and a diagonal right here and it's super super strong uh, I did design this so there's no fuel splash that's going to get on the motor or get anywhere near the exhaust. It is six inches from from the exhaust, so I don't think there's any way that that is going to heat that up. And that is leaning back in such a way, if you notice the cutout of this, it drops down to where it has a fuel sump system. And so... I believe, I'm, I believe pretty sure that I'm not going to need any sort of um, pulse um, fuel pump. That's why it's all gravity feed. So I haven't tested everything out. I got to set the idle and everything. I tightened the chain, lubed it up, put air in the tires. I put a second vent on the motor. This vent goes to the um, the port that's built into the valve cover, and then I drilled another one. And you notice I put these air, air filters, I mean, because they breathe. But I knocked the end off of them to signify that it, that is for windage. If if you noticed inside that motor, if you ever tore, if you ever been around a lot of these motors, you'll notice that there's a lot of air it moves around inside there and that's free horsepower if you can vent that air moving in and inside that motor out so that's a cheap little idea I just used a nipple you can see it right there tapped it in everybody does it and that's what everybody likes to use right there for their pulse but but honestly 
if you was to put a small manifold, that would be a better vacuum source. But, like I said, there's a lot of windage, wind moving inside this motor. And if you can cut that out, that's free horsepower and makes it run more efficient. So, I am hoping, uh, now that I got this done, test it out and be satisfied with it and uh, set it aside. And that way I can get on to other projects to finish and get stuff going. This one I should be able to fill up and let the kids run it all day or all week if I want to. Now you see I use zip ties. I don't want that moving. I don't want that coming off. And if there's any splash that does come out gas, it's away from the engine and it's away from the passenger. That's stuff you got to think about. So, also, yeah, I had to notch that. I, bol I was bolting these up. These are uh, half inch. And it's held down really good. But I had to notch that. Um, that's a silicon hose. I think that's a six millimeter crap. I, I forgot what size it was, guys. Here it was. I was doing all this stuff and can't even remember. But it, and that's about the same size as the nipple on the um, carburetor down there. So. Oil is up. I haven't put any fuel in there. Um, I like to put a lot of slime in these tires and pump them up real good, and then they'll usually uh, stay up, man, for years like that. I did that to my lawnmower, put a bunch of slime in there, and I've never had to put air in my uh, lawnmower tires. But every now and then, I put a little bit in here to get them back up. See. But anyhow, that's where we're at on this one. I think that's a great idea for a fuel cell. Uh, eventually, I'd like to do it for that one over there. And I need to build that one, which I want to put an electric start engine on there and maybe redo the rear axle system on it. I bought that frame off a, um, a body shop guy, and uh, it's really nice. Now, my fuel cell... I want to get another one. I've got another one on the way like that one. And guys, you can get this off eBay for $40 or $45. They're used uh, for drag racing. Uh, they put them at the, usually they're at the, you'll see them at the front of a dragster. They, um, well, I ain't going to explain anyhow. But my idea on this one is to put the fuel cell down low and use a pulse pump to feed the engine. That way, I'm not having to build a frame. I got it down low. It'll be secure. Uh, but uh, I'm doing a lot of different work to that. I got to cut another chain. I got um, working on the brakes. Uh, I got to get another bearing. That bearing a shot. So, anyhow, it may be ugly, but man, does it run, and it runs good. But anyhow, you guys uh, have a good one. Hope this helps somebody out, and we'll catch you on the next video.